Okay, 2b, we've got x squared minus x equals 20. This is a quadratic equation because it has a squared in it. And we're going to solve by factoring. And we've got three steps. And the first step is get 0 on one side. Okay? And we went over these steps in, in question 2a. So get 0 on one side. How would you get 0 on one side, first of all? <coughs> you subtract 20, right? From both sides, right? So that gives you x squared minus x minus 20 is equal to 0, right? So that's step one. Step two is you got to factorize. Can you factorize this now? This thing? So when we have 0 on one side, then we factorize. And then we can do the, if a times b is 0, then a is 0 or b is 0. So feel free to press pause on the video and finish it yourself. But I'll go through it slowly anyway. So this is a short method of factoring or a reverse foil if you like. And it's always good to put in the coefficient of negative x. What's the coefficient of negative x here? What number could you put in front of the x? Could you put a 1, like a negative 1x, right? So we list the pairs of factors at 20, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3 doesn't go in, 4 times 5 works, right? We find two numbers that multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 1. So the two numbers, they've got to multiply to give negative 20, and then they've got to add to give negative 1. So take your time, what two numbers satisfy that? What two numbers multiply to give negative 20, and then they add to give negative 1? <laughs> well, negative 5 and positive 4, right? See, 5 and 4 have a difference of 1. Negative 5 and positive 4 add to negative 1. What happens when you multiply them? <laughs> multiply them, you get negative 20, right? What does not work is a positive 5 and a negative 4. Because if you add these, what do you get? What's positive 5 and negative 4 added together? <laughs> See, that's positive 1. We don't want positive 1, we want negative 1. So this is no use. Okay, that's no use. Right? We want the negative 5 and the positive 4. So, this gives us x minus 5 times x plus 4 equals 0. And now we can use our step 3. If And we went over this in the last question. If a times b is 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. Right? So if this times this is 0, then either this is 0 or this is 0. And we can solve each one of these. Right? So how would you solve this? Just add 5 to both sides. And you would get x equals 5. Or x equals what? How would you solve this one? Just subtract 4, right? x equals negative 4. So here, here are the two solutions, x equals 5 or negative 4. We have two solutions for, the, for x.